This lesson is Newton's method. Newton's method is a numerical technique for approximating a zero of a function. It kind of works like this. You, you, we're trying to get to this zero down here. So we, we guess that it might be here. And we go straight up to the curve. We get on the tangent line at that point and come back down to the x-axis. And that puts us closer to the zero or root we're looking for. And then we repeat the process. We go straight up to the curve. We get on the tangent line at that point and go back down to the x-axis. And then we go straight up to the curve. We get on the tangent line and go back down to the x-axis. Every time we do that, we get closer and closer to the actual root. So we're approximating that root. There's actually a formula that does this for us. We don't necessarily want to do this graphically. We can do this algebraically. The next guess, or if this is our first guess, our second guess, our third guess, approximating that root. Our next guess is equal to our current guess minus um, f of our current guess over f prime of our current guess. So we're going to do this actually, in, and we're going to calculate this out on the next slide. But let's look at an animation that I found online here of this actually happening. If you want to play with this yourself, go ahead and go to this URL. Uh, www.math.umn.edu slash tilde garrett slash that's uh, qy slash newton.html and what happens here is we can just pick any point along here uh, and click on it and it actually runs Newton's method it'll go up find the point get on the tangent line come down go up find the point get on the tangent line come down and keep doing that till it gets really close to the actual zero. So it took four approximations to get from here to there, which is supposed to be really close to the actual zero. Let's clear it out and try again. Let's try one over here. So this time we got on the tangent line and we went way over here and then up and squiggle back towards this zero. Notice we probably should have gone to this one, but because we went so far over, we went past this zero and on the other side of the other one. Let's see if we can hit this zero. Let's get a little closer. And that's just going to go right on in. So, it, if you get if you get really close to horizontal, it'll increase the number of approximations it takes to come back in to your zero. But here it came back in. It took nine, eleven. There we go, eleven approximations to get in there. So that's Newton's method, a little example that shows what's happening graphically there. A good one at UMN. Let's uh, use Newton's method to find the cube root of seven correct to six decimal places assuming for some reason that our cube root button or our great graphing calculator doesn't work we can actually do this with Newton's method so the cube root of seven we're trying to figure out what that is if we write that as x cubed minus seven equals zero an equation now we have a function that we can work with f of x equals x cubed minus seven and we can actually work with Newton's method. So let's guess that it may be at 2. We know it's not at 2 because 2 cubed is 8 minus 1 is, or minus 7 is 1, not, not 0, but it's close to 2. So let's guess that it may be at 2. And we're going to go ahead and follow this, this uh, Newton's method formula here. So our second guess, the one that should be closer to the 0 than actually 2 is, would take 2 minus f of 2 over f prime of 2. Well, 2 minus f of 2 is 8 minus 7 or 1. f prime is 3x squared. x squared is 4 3 times 3 is 12. So that's 2 minus the 12. This is approximately this value. Our next guess would take the value that we had here, x2, and plug it in uh, for x sub 2 here minus f of x sub 2. So we'd have to plug that in here, cube it, subtract 7, and then plug that into the derivative 3x squared. and and run this calculation we get 1.91 notice it's already correct to the hundreds positions 91 it's not rounded there but we've got it accurate almost to the hundreds position there let's go ahead and run another iteration 91293 it's correct all the way out here and the fifth time we run that notice how these are exactly the same so we have it correct to six decimal places All right, you can actually do all those calculations we just did on this previous slide um, without doing so much handwork. You can actually use a good calculator to do a, a bunch of this for you and kind of speed up the process of Newton's 
Newton's method here. So in this example, this, this, this slide is going to walk you through an example of doing that. You're going to enter the function f of x, or y, equals x cubed plus 3x plus 1. Go ahead and put that into y1, and then put the derivative of that function into uh, y2. And then go back to the main calculation screen, called the home screen. Store the initial guess into x. And the way you do that is you type, uh, let's guess that negative uh, 0.3 is, is a 0. So you type negative 0.3, and then you press the store button and press x. And that'll store that into x. Then what you do is you type x minus y1 over y2. So this, this is actually just Newton's method right here. It's the, it's the previous guess minus f of that guess divided by f prime of that guess. And then we're going to store that into x. And then what we do is we just keep pressing enter over and over and over again, and it keeps running this calculation with each new guess. And then um, you should see the numbers on your screen start to become the same number, basically. It's, it'll be accurate to as many decimal places as your calculator can handle. So let's try that. Let's use Newton's method to, uh, to estimate this. Uh, equations zeros x cubed plus x minus one to uh, six decimal places so go ahead and uh, use the the method that we just discussed on the previous slide in fact I'll just back that up for you x cubed plus x minus one equals zero x cubed plus x minus one so the only difference is it's not the same function here but the directions are here so you're gonna have to come up with a guess x cubed plus x minus one and then go ahead and run through here you might want to pause on this screen and give that a try if, if that worked out for you, you should have got this answer, or at least to six decimal places, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you probably see an eight right here, because your calculator would round that off. Unless you did the rounding, unless you have more than that on your calculator, you might have eight decimal places where you could actually do that rounding yourself. So here's another one to try. Go ahead and use that calculator method again to do Newton's method. See if you can find all real solutions. That's implying that there's more than one. So uh, see how many zeros you can find using Newton's method. Okay, if you found them both, they're right here on the screen. And uh, hopefully you could find them both. If you, if you missed one of them, just uh, for example, if you didn't find the negative one, uh, try starting at like uh, negative 2 or negative 1.5 and then run Newton's method a little bit on your calculator and see if you come up with this value. Here's another one to try. Again, try to find all real solutions here. Go ahead and pause and give that a try now. Before you did that, hopefully you solved this for zero, so you had something to enter into y1, and then it's derivative in y2. And if you found both solutions, they're here at the bottom of the screen. Here's another one to try. This looks like it might have two solutions. It's got kind of a quadratic form. And it's uh, down two, so it's definitely going to have a vertex below the x-axis. Go ahead and give that a try. If you found them both, you have uh, a lot of symmetry here. You can see that in these zeros. And that's our learning target, kind of an interesting little, little gem of calculus there, Newton's method. I'll see you in class.